Do you have to be an expert searcher to find information? Certainly not. But the more you know about the process, the better you'll be at it, and you may even get to a point where you actually like to do research. No, really. Learning to use keywords and subject headings in your search is going to save you time and improve the quality of what you find. So, why should you make an effort to become a great searcher? The first reason to do so is best demonstrated by the old saying, garbage in, garbage out. In this case, it means that you'll get lousy results if you don't make an effort to put in a good search to begin with. I know you all love the library and you want to spend every waking minute in the library or searching our databases, but sometimes you just want to get the research done. The better searcher you are, the faster you'll get the research over with. Lastly, I'm going to teach you some librarian search tricks that will make you popular with your classmates and amaze your professors. All right, that last point may be a little silly, but many students just don't have the time to learn the little things that we as librarians use to make our searching fast and easy. I bet that most of you are pretty good at finding what you need using search engines like Google, especially for everyday stuff like finding restaurants or where to get your oil changed. You know it's a waste of time to type an entire sentence into Google, like, where are Italian restaurants in Boise? This is called natural language searching, which means that you use complete sentences. For those of you with an iPhone or an iPad, Siri is an example of using natural language to search. Some databases have tried to use this, ask.com is one, but we generally prefer to type less and that means using keywords. Keywords take the most important parts of a question and ignore the rest. So in our example, we type in something like Italian restaurants Boise. Most search engines and databases completely ignore all the connecting words like the or 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 in. These are known as stop words. Finally, you can search using subject headings. These are terms that have been assigned to a source by a human. You don't use subject headings in Google, but they can be very useful when searching library databases. Generally, these are not like normal language. They tend to be more formal and kind of strange. We are going to focus on just keywords and subject headings since few databases use natural language. All right, so we're going to start looking at keywords since that's probably what you're already using. Keywords are words that you come up with. Google lets you search this way, but most library databases allow you to search using keywords as well. Keyword searching is a great way to get started, especially if you have no idea what's out there, much less what the subject headings are. Even if you're an expert with searching, you'll still want to use the keywords if your topic is on the cutting edge or if it's jargon, which is specific to a particular field as these will probably not have subject headings at all. One warning is that keyword searching is not precise and you may end up with way more than you'd ever want to look through. This is an example of searching using keywords. So let's say I want to find information about the use of humor as part of the treatment process for cancer. I have no idea what subject headings or keywords the experts use, not yet. So these are just the terms I came up with on my own. You can use these in both Google and in library databases like CINAHL. But how do you come up with keywords? First, you wanna look at your topic and decide what the major concepts are. Let's use an example related to cyberbullying. This one has four solid concepts. Cyberbullying, middle school students, school strategies, and suicide attempts. And these are the terms that you would search on versus entering the entire sentence into a search engine or a database. Now let's take these concepts and think about other keywords we can use to search. Again, you're coming up with your own terms or terms maybe you found when you're getting background information. This doesn't have to be an extensive list. Just think a little bit about the other words you could use that can help you find additional information related to your topic. Now, you don't have to search on all of these at once. In fact, I recommend that you don't tackle more than two to three concepts at a time as this can over limit your search and then you'll get frustrated because you won't be able to find very much. Take what are the most important concepts to you. So maybe to start with, we would just look at cyberbullying and suicide. Then we can start honing in on maybe what middle schools are doing to tackle the problem. So start broad and then get more specific by adding additional concepts. Subject headings aren't exactly the opposite of keywords, but they don't have a lot in common. Where keywords are terms that you come up with, subject headings are given to an article or a book. 
Someone, it's usually a librarian or some subject matter expert, will read or skim through the material and they will assign terms that best match what the article or book is about. These terms are not unlimited. The librarian cannot just assign whatever terms they want. They have to use what exists in the database already. This can lead to subject headings that don't perfectly match the topic, especially if it's something that's relatively new. The upside to subject headings is that they are very precise. Once you find one or two that are actually related to your topic, you are good to go. You will find subject headings within the record of a book or an article, and we'll watch a separate video that shows you where and how to find those. The general rule is that you use keywords to find subject headings. Listen, I know this whole keywords and subject headings can be a strange concept to wrap your head around, and I swear I wouldn't force you to learn about it if I didn't think that it was going to really help you. Students ask me all the time how I'm able to find all the stuff I can find, and this is it. There's no secret librarian tricks. So remember, keywords are your words. These are terms that you think of when looking at the concepts in your research question. They are really good to get started. A major weakness of keywords is that when you type a word into a database or library catalog, it's looking for that exact term, either in the title of the book or article or in the abstract or somewhere else it actually has to appear. But it's not looking for the bigger concept. So if I type in cyberbullying, the database will only bring up stuff if it uses that exact term it will miss something that might call this same issue online bullying. Subject headings, on the other hand, don't care if the term appears anywhere in the article or book. They focus on the concept, not the specific term. So if there's a subject heading for cyberbullying and you search on this, it will bring up everything that talks about that concept, even if they don't use that exact term. This is amazing, people. We'll be exploring this further as we move along the semester. The negatives of subject heading is that they aren't always super up to date and they can be a bit weird. Stuff you wouldn't necessarily think of on your own. What I'm going to show you throughout the rest of the semester is that an awesome search uses both keywords and subject headings.